What makes for a great company to work for? Is it the pay? Is it the benefits? The career growth opportunities? On this episode of Today in Tech, we're going to discuss what makes companies one of the best places to work in IT. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Today in Tech. I'm Keith Shaw. Joining me on the show today is Beth Stackpole. She is a Computer World contributor and author of the site's Best Places to Work in IT 2024 edition. And Valerie Potter, features editor and one of the coordinators of this project. Welcome to the show, Beth and Val. Thank you. Oh, thank you for having us. All right. So, so Val, this is the 30th year that Computer World has done this project. I didn't realize that this project had that kind of longevity. Why, why do you think that the, this has resonated with readers of, of Computer World back in the days when we had print magazines and, and now viewers and readers of the website? Why, why is this such a cool project? Well, I think partly it's aspirational. Um, tech workers are eager to see who the best employers are and thinking maybe I should apply to one of these organizations and uh, curiosity, what type of benefits and perks are other IT pros getting and can I get those, um, that kind of thing. I think it's also just really nice to read about companies that are treating their workers right. It's it's just, a, it's like a feel good package every year. <laughs> and, um, and of course, <laughs> for the, for, uh, it's also, I think other employers look at it as well, because they want to see that, you know, with all the competition for tech talent, they want to see what these uh, A plus companies are doing yeah. to attract the best tech talent. So uh, I think it's just a, it's a little cheat sheet for, for those types of companies to find out, you know, what works. Yeah, I'm, I'm always curious to see, does that, is that an indication of maybe there's a lot of companies out there that uh, are not great places to work and, like, <laughs> and, and, and the popularity of the, of the project might lead some, some, some people to go, yeah, I've, I work for a company that hates me <laughs> and maybe I should go try to find out where the good ones are. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, have you gotten a sense? And I, again, I'm not going to ask you how many years you've worked on the project, but as the as the the project has evolved, have you noticed um, maybe different areas gain more attention than others? You know, did it used to be just about how much people were paying, and that was the thing? But now it's more about benefits. Because as I've gone along in my career, my priorities have changed about what I want from a company. Yeah. Um, well, some things are constant. It's definitely something there's been some some change as the world has changed. But um, but I will tell you, I started working on this project in 2012. So, you know, it's been it's been a good chunk of time yeah. um, that I've been personally been involved with it. It was going for a lot longer even before that. So uh, but but even back then, I, I mean, it, you know, it's always been obvious that um, companies work to attract top talent with great salaries and benefits and office perks, all that stuff. But even back then, there was uh, the, the uh, companies that people were most enthusiastic about focused on corporate culture um, across the whole organization and within the IT department. And that's a trend that I've only seen strengthen over the years, uh, including through the p pandemic. Yeah. And, um, you know, these employers invest in their workers. They offer all kinds of training, career development, uh, challenging projects so they can learn new skills and grow in new directions. They recognize employee accomplishments. Um, they foster a spirit of teamwork and employee engagement. They sponsor group activities. Um, it just all of these things tell IT pros that they are valued. And uh, this has been the case at the top organizations all along. You know, as long as I've been working on this project, yeah. those elements have been there. All right. And just quickly talk about how you compile the list. Uh, do you do you go out and, and you know, research and survey a lot of these companies uh anecdotes from people or do they fill out a form is it is it is it just data that you collect and then it's a ranking and it's more science than art or is there an is there an art for determining yeah this this feels like it's a good place to work or we get or they get mentioned in other publications and 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 things like that like give me a little bit you don't have to tell me about you know the complete sausage making process but just give me a little <laughs> bit, a, a little taste i guess 
Well, it's a little bit art and science, both. Okay, I'd that's say good. It's, it's more weighted towards the science, um, but it, but they're both present. Um, so we have this 58 question survey mm -hmm. uh, that, that companies fill out and ask detailed questions, everything from the rate of IT growth, salary increases, uh, to benefits and perks, to training and career development programs, even things like DEI practices, uh, employee engagement and retain, uh, retaining um, strategies, all that kind of stuff. So that's the hard data part. I mean, it's all, um, you know, these are just uh, multiple choice or yes, no kind of questions. And uh, so uh, all that data gets crunched by, uh, we have a, a a research organization that does all that kind of okay. hard data yep. thing. And they come up with the initial rankings in three separate groups for large, mid-sized and small organizations. Um, but we also ask these companies to write essays uh, that elaborate <laughs> on these okay. efforts. Uh, so it really like, it's a big commitment yeah. to, to uh, be part of this program. Um, it, it sounds like so my college. Write... It sounds like my daughter's college applications that she's going through at the moment. Um, that's why yeah. I chuckled when yeah. I heard essay. Yeah. Very much like that, yes. Yeah. So, and but this is where the art comes in because uh, a panel of editorial judges reviews all those okay. essays, and and then we assign points based on what each company is doing, you know, in a particular area. So, I was looking, for instance, at the diversity, equity, and inclusion essays mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. assign signing points based on that. So those additional points from the judges are factored in. Right, right. And then that and then the final results are tallied. So it's it's largely database, but there's definitely human judgment in there as well. Okay. So so let's let's get Beth into the conversation now. Well we're talking about twenty twenty four. What are the big trends that uh, emerged from this year's list? What what are the big the the big picture categories of making them a best place to work. I think the biggest uh, shift that we that we saw this year, and I think it's been building over the last few years, um, is that IT has really been recognized as the kind of epicenter of the business. So you know we've been talking about digital transformation for years. Mm -hmm. um, the pandemic really accelerated everything as companies you know put all kinds of you know everything from work from home to new customer experiences. And I think the lesson that came out of that, which we've seen sort of perpetuated last year and again this year, is that you know IT is really seen as a business you know, a strategic business partner now, not just an organization that you call because your computer won't work or, you know, you need some sort of tech support handholding or you want to, you know, go through the pros and cons on a particular product. You, We really see, um, you know, these organizations that really stood out are sort of practicing what they preach and they're really putting um, mechanisms and programs in place um, that sort of enable um, that that IT and business, you know, partnership yeah. and really recognizing the IT organization um, as that sort of equal. And I don't I, I think that's a shift from maybe way back in the beginning when we did this. And I, what I was going to say, because I've worked on quite a few of these also. Um, in the beginning, you know, companies might like to do this because they like to showcase their organization and their people and their projects as the star, but it was sort of in their own little microcosm. And I feel like what's shifted and, and what's being reflected last year, this year and going forward is it, it's, it's, you know, IT is sort of on the center stage for all of the business. It's not just in their own little world anymore. Right. And I think these companies do the best job of making that happen from from a program and cultural perspective. And, and it did feel like there were two other areas that, uh, that I want to ask you about, uh, including uh, the ability to cultivate talent from within a company. Um, have you yeah. seen shifts from companies that might used to go outside the firm to find new employees, but now they're looking at, all right, who do we already have and how can we make them better? Uh, but then yeah. also in, in a similar vein, uh, getting people from from the business side of things, so maybe you're in marketing or maybe you're in uh, sales and getting them interested in the technology IT side of things and, and, and creating that that uh, cohesion integration. Is, is that something that yes. we've seen over the last few years? Yes, we've definitely seen a lot more of that. I think part of that has to do with ongoing talent shortages and talent crunches in some of the critical areas. But I also think that's also reflective of this sort of 
you know, IT business synergy. So for folks that have been working in IT and have already immersed in the business and maybe are working with, you know, particular functional areas, they get the business, they understand what the objectives are, they know what the, the goals are. And so um, it makes sense that, that you want to hold on to that kind of intellectual capital because it's more important than just getting the greatest, you know, AI specialist or whatever that doesn't have the same context around your organization and objectives. So we definitely saw a lot of programs and pathways where, you know, tech people can go immerse in the business and maybe spend time in different functional areas or teamed up with specific business partners. But we're also seeing um, you know, business folk who perhaps have a propensity for some sort of technology, they're good at, you know, analytics, or they can do visualizations and that kind of thing. You know, some of these companies that at real stands out are creating programs where they can learn and upskill maybe particular uh, you know, technology skills, maybe learn, you know, Tableau or visualizations or data science and, you know, really elevate them. And I think that, um, you know, it just creates more opportunities and, and more unique kinds of roles that, that IT or, you mm -hmm. know, IT folks can, can get into versus the same old, same old. That, yeah. That's, I, that's I think when we're that. talking about a lot of the, the business people getting involved in more and more technology, do you think that that's a result of a generation of, of, of employees that were exposed to technology from, you know, the day they were born and are now into the workplace, whether it's a Generation Z generation, uh, a millennial generation? Um, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit older than that, but I came about like I was working in a world before the Internet. But I, I adapted to it okay. and very quickly. Uh, but you you have younger workers that, uh, you know, if, if, if you're in accounting, you're like, of course, I'm going to know how to use accounting software. Or of course, I'm going to know how to use this computer. You know, I've been using it for 25 years. So it might be easier now to find those people to then say, well, why don't you guys take the next step and, and, and really work on this IT project rather than just thinking, well, I have to be a computer programmer, for example. Right. Do you think yeah, that that's part of the, the reason we're seeing this now? Yeah, I think it's that in the early days, IT was sort of this little island, this little silo yeah. that was off, you know, they, the business gave, okay, we want to do this HR application, or we want this particular thing, and IT did it off over here. Whereas now that technology is so pervasive in our home lives and in our personal lives, we expect that same type of technology at work and everybody's familiar with it. Therefore, if you're thinking about a specific initiative you might want to do, there's always a technology component to it. it it's not a silo anymore. Yeah, so Va Valerie, that, were you seeing that when, when you were evaluating a lot of the, the, the companies as well? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, um, uh, digital transformation. I mean, I, I'm not a big fan of that term. Yeah, but, I hate that um, term too. <laughs> <clears throat> however, it's like uh, it's like you're know, doing a magic trick, and it's like I'm going to digitally transform <laughs> this. Poof. Yeah, exactly. Um, but uh, but uh, it, what it basically means is that all tech, all companies are all businesses are technology businesses nowadays. I mean, all forward looking ones anyways. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. so um, and that just makes IT and, and IT workers equal partners. And um, and so, you know, who does who wouldn't want to be part of that? I mean, it's just it, it's symbiotic. And so it's only natural that people are going to cross back and forth much right, more than right. used to be the case. Now, now, last year's the theme of the of the uh, project was it's good to be in IT. Um, are you seeing has this trend continued, even though we've seen a lot of tech layoffs, especially in the early part of 2023? And now it's starting to bubble up again. We're hearing of some major tech layoffs or major companies that are in tech uh, laying off their employees or, or it's still is it still good to be in IT, I guess? Anyone? Uh, can yes. Yeah. yeah. There, Go ahead, Beth. There, Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, the research, I mean, it was like the lion's share of companies in the 80s or 90s percent, you know, all are, are planning on growing their staff, all are looking at, you know, promotions, all looking at raises, um, very, very little, if any, consolidation. So I think there's a delineation between the technology companies that perhaps, you know, overhired and they, you know, everybody bought technology during the pandemic. And 
Um, I actually work on the state of the CIO project. And what we saw last year was a real re like retrenching where not retrenching, but sort of a digesting is how I like to put it. Like everybody bought all this stuff and now they had to sort of like make sure it was, you know, doing what it was supposed to do and they were getting ROI. So I don't think the cuts translate to the IT organizations within, you know, sort of most companies if you're if you're not in the tech sector. At least the research didn't reflect that. Okay. There's and no valid and, and again, you, you brought up the, the pandemic, which then leads to questions around uh, remote work in the last year we see we saw a big pushback by a lot of companies to get people back in the office and um, I think most people have settled on this this hybrid work reality which has an impact uh, if you're in IT of supporting remote workers and making sure that they have access to all the right tools and software uh, you know I you did discover that there are some hybrid work issues from a lot of these companies that were on the list correct Beth, you, hybrid work issues meaning well, well i think that that you know that hybrid work is still a high priority for a lot of companies but they're getting oh. but they're getting a little bit stricter right yeah so what we saw was the larger companies tend to have more formal policies i mean they're all sort of green lighting hybrid work most of the companies the larger companies are tending to have more formal policies where you know these are in office days versus not in office days and the actual it employees have some latitude in terms of adjusting that schedule but for the most part it's done in tandem with their manager whereas the smaller companies the difference was um that employees to, you know they, they had less formal policies if any policies at all i think our number one a uh, small best small company did not have any formal policy at all it was really up to the employee as to how to structure their schedule and they were the smaller companies were also more open to remote uh fully remote positions and i think the upside of that is you know when you go back to this whole notion of talent uh that really opens the door for them to have a much larger talent pool to choose from if they're not tied to their specific geographic area mm -hmm, so i think mm -hmm. that's another motivation but those were, you know, those were pretty much the differences we saw. Yeah. Do you, do you think uh, a lot of companies can use the categories that, that you identified in this story as a recruiting tool? Like if you were a company and you were like, you know, we have a pretty kick-ass uh, hybrid work policy here or remote work policy. We're going to use that as our recruiting tool. Uh, or do you think that they're going to be focused more on some of these other areas like career growth or um you know developing from within some of those those aspects might be more uh attractive than than maybe strict you know either pay or hybrid work like hybrid work might be less of a of, a, of an appeal these days i feel like it has to be a combination of all of the above because okay. it really depends on the individual i have a 20 something son who's in uh data science roles and this is his second job and he only wants fully remote which I don't think it's great, but that's what he wants. Whereas <laughs> yeah. other people, you know, really want like a, a great, you know, in office type of culture. So I feel like the the companies that are doing the best job, I think, of being, you know, a best place to work kind of are addressing all of these areas. They're not necessarily picking a spot. They're really making a serious effort at all of these spots. So it's a holistic kind of approach. Yeah. And and now the report does does break down some of these companies into the like large midsize and small companies, correct? Val, like that's was that is is that a, a conscious decision because it just makes it easier to categorize? Or do you see differences between companies when it comes to the size, like maybe a larger company can do more of these cool things, whereas smaller companies can do, can they, they can be a little bit more flexible on some of these issues. Like, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, really the reason we, we separated them um, was just because it is, you're just comparing apples to oranges to grapefruit. I okay. Mean, well, let me, or banana. That's, let's, let's that's fine. <laughs> Just keep this. Some sort of fruit. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 they're citrus fruit. Um, but anyway, uh, the, it, the experience of working in these different size companies is very different. And it just sort of sort of felt like, you know, this is a level playing field too. We're comparing, you know, likes to likes this way. And, but it's true. I mean, if, if you're an IT employee looking for, 
for work, you're going to have a different experience at, at a much larger company um, than, you, than you are at a small one. And like you said, the larger companies may have deeper pockets and um, yeah. be able to offer, you know, the, the gym on site and the, you know, the cafeteria with the, the super healthy food or uh, seven different types of food to choose from and, you know, things like that, subsidized meals, all those, those, you know, really exceptional perks. But, um, but you might get more flexibility out of a small company, you might also get more experience doing different things um, at a smaller company because there's there's fewer people to cover everything so right right you might you might be able to move up more quickly at a smaller company yeah, so it, you it, know. It, it does feel like uh that categorization is a reader benefit uh, given that a lot of IT workers might, or e anybody in general, you've probably worked for a small company, you've probably worked for a midsize, and maybe you've worked for a big company, and um, you were like, well, geez, I'm never going to work for a, a big company ever again because uh, you, it was layers and layers and layers of bureaucracy that were, were frustrating. But on the other end, if you, you know, I was like, yeah, I worked for a startup once, and it was like you had to work for 70 hours a week and you had to do six <laughs> different jobs, and that can get stressful and frustrating too. Again, depending on where you are in your career growth. So um, I think it's it's neat that you do that with um, split, splitting that off. So if I was in IT, it's like, well, I, I, don't, I don't care about any of these large companies because I will never work for them again. And I'll look at the chart that says, all right, smaller companies, what can I do? Um, Beth, I, have, I, I, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Beth. The smaller companies that made the list, and especially at the top of the list, they're more progressive and they're definitely more uh, apt to see IT and, and technology in general as a key differentiator. So in those companies, you probably do have lots of kind of perhaps cool opportunities that you might not get at a larger company because maybe it's not so much like put you in the box, this is your role. I think, you know, smaller companies in general, not every company is as progressive or, you know, especially at a smaller level has gotten to that place yet. So, so I think when you're thinking about it, you also have to think about, um, uh, the type of company right. and, and, and where they are on the digital maturity spectrum. Okay. And, uh, what are some of the more unique benefit packages that are out there? Our benefits are still, a it's, it's still a big factor about choosing where, you know, you might want to work or looking at companies that are, that might make the list versus ones that don't like what, what are some of the newer or cooler things that, that you guys have been seeing Beth? Well, I feel like in the early days I did this, a lot of the commentary was on, you know, the, the cool, like the rooms with, you know, the pool tables and the dart boards and the, 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 you know, the coffee area where there were free snacks and all of that kind yeah. of stuff. Some have the beer keg. Um, <laughs> didn't see as much of that the last few years. Not that there aren't perks like that. There are. I felt like this year a lot of them were really focused on wellness perks and creating work-life balance. So you saw everything from parental leave and reimbursements, you know, for childcare or on-site childcare. Um, one of the more unique ones that stood out to me was a company who had uh, some travel kind of benefits put in place specifically for women who were in need of women's health care that might have to travel outside their state in response to what happened this year with Roe v. Wade. I thought that uh -huh. was pretty interesting. Um, a lot of like, you know, again, in the wellness vein, meditation, yoga, uh, on-site gyms, um, you know, virtual like competitions, virtual races, all those kinds of things, you know, both to create camaraderie, but also to really strike that balance between, um, you know, what, it, you know, work life type balance. And I think a lot of that came out of the pandemic also where people be kind of became focused on that. So, so less the, less the cool, like, quote unquote tech bro perks and more of the focus <laughs> on that type of stuff. I think every time I've, I, I've ever seen a company that has like either a pool table or a ping pong table, n nobody's actually using them. They're, they're, right. you know, the, <laughs> Like, only on TV. Yeah, it's only on. Yeah, you see it in the like a show like Silicon Valley or or some some Hollywood expectation about what a cool company is. But did, yeah. you, did you ever did you see the video of of uh, that was that was viral about uh, the woman that worked at Twitter and she was showing her Sleeping. day and it and it and it included a wine on tap type of <laughs> of 
it wasn't it wasn't beer on tap it was wine on tap and so at the end of the day she was like yeah now i have my glass of wine and i can watch it out on my balcony i don't, I don't know if you saw that it, it, it was i didn't see that i yeah. saw someone sleeping in their office like yeah. literally like taking their <laughs> office their, well their- yeah, and again you know again so I, I think the biggest perk i ever got when when i was at computer world and, and network world in the early days was on thursday night they uh that was their their big deadline day deadline. And back get back in the the print days and so the big, yeah. the big, the big perk was, oh, we get pizza. <laughs> like, so, and, <laughs> and we thought it was a perk, but it was really just like we're going to keep you here until eight o'clock and nine o'clock at night, and we don't want you leave for, <laughs> leaving for dinner. So here's some free pizza. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> I, I think that that grew out of that. It, it was like, oh, well, you know, we have to feed our employees, or they're going to go and leave, and and you know, never, not come back that night. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think that the health, the healthy stuff is cool. I. Um, I'm, I'm one of those guys that was like, I wish they had a vending machine here at the office, but no. well, I think the healthy we, stuff is also to draw people back into the office. Okay. So yeah. if you've got a gym That's and you've got thing. meditation and you've got yoga, theoretically, maybe you'll come in to take advantage of those things. Yeah. It, I think one of the things on the list was massage therapists. There are companies that are actually providing massage therapy as a benefit. Yep. Supposedly, according to, <laughs> according to some of the forms they fill out, yes. Oh, oh, and I wanted to mention off the, this paid time off for pay it forward volunteer opportunities. That was one of the the, the unique uh, uh, benefits. And and yeah, do you feel like do you feel that. do you feel like employees are looking for those, or is it more of a rec- again a recruiting tool by by uh, a company to be like, and we offer this because we think it's cool. I don't think it's necessarily a recruiting tool so much. I mean, I think I, I, I don't know anybody who would make a job decision based on that, you know, but um, but it's a nice to have and it and it shows that the company cares about, you know, other things other than the bottom line. Mm-hmm. And in addition to having, you know, paid time off for individual employees to just go out and do volunteer opportunities, a lot of them will actually arrange group volunteer activities. So the whole IT team will go and work in a food bank for the day or uh, or go, you know, work with um, high school students to teach them technology skills, uh, computer skills, things like that. And that is a is a group building exercise and it, it increases employee engagement. And yeah, it's a day off from work, but uh, that you get paid for. But um, I, I think it really, really helps build the corporate culture. Mm-hmm, and so, mm-hmm. you know, I guess in that sense, it is a, it's more of a retention tool than a yeah. recruiting tool. Yeah. Now, as, as both of you, I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit. Um, when you, ha- you obviously have seen the list and you, and you know about some of the companies on the list. Is, do you have a, 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 either a favorite company that's on that list that made the list or something that really stood stood them out as as one of the best places to work (laughs) sorry about that i i'm I'm getting i i have one company i i don't know that i should say the name but i i found this i think i think you can i think we won't get in trouble if you say it unless they're they're doing something bad well it was one of the best it it was one of the top mid-sized companies power home building is the name okay and what struck me as very interesting is that um they are a build it yourself and not not that they're that's what they do for business but their whole it is is wrapped around build it yourself so they built their own transformation platform they built their own platform that's like their platform for connecting contractors and jobs and all of that and a lot of the technology they're working on is 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 built in-house and in but it but it's you know that kind of sounded strange to me because so much of of IT is not built in house these days. But right. what was super interesting is it, it's a thread throughout their culture. I mean, it's like they use it to promote their culture. They have a big event every year where people come in and they're tasked with a challenge and they, you know, build the system. And sometimes that particular element gets incorporated into the main platform. But everything they do from recruiting to to their, you know, to, to how they work together to their um the types of people that they hire and their their criteria and all of that is all wrapped around uh, this build it yourself kind of thing. And, and to me, that was just so interesting because it just shows how the culture has really taken over. And it's not just this little silo isolated, you know, department building stuff. Mm-hmm. It's this 
you know, epicenter of the business that works with all the various functions to build what they need to to stay competitive and and to really kind of create the edge in their business world. And I I, I found that really interesting. And and it's a and it's an example of. Uh, and I hate to use this old cliche, but whenever we'd hear somebody, we were like, we eat our own dog food or, you know, I, I think that that's trying to be replaced by another phrase that doesn't sound as, as, as disgusting as that is. But, you know, if that's what they're providing for customers, then yeah, it has to be something that they're doing internally as well. And, and throughout the whole company, not just IT, like you said. Yeah. Val, have you, have you got one or are you, are you, do you just love all the companies? It's like asking to pick your favorite, <laughs> you know, your favorite uh, dog, child or, or animal. <laughs> yeah, I, I wouldn't say I have a favorite company. I do have some like favorite programs or just cool little things they do. Like one one company and on, honestly, I can't remember which one it was now, but they have a um, a program that allows any employee to reserve 30 minutes on the calendar of any IT leader. And I just think that's very, Ooh. very cool. Yeah. Um, and and I actually wish I could remember who that was right now. But um, but that I mean that is just again, it's just showing employees that they're valued. It's giving them one on one time with a with a leader in their department. And you you know for any purpose you want, you can you can um, you know bring up concerns, questions, ideas. You know I I just think that's a a really really cool thing. There's another company that has a um, quarterly innovation event where they bring people in from different parts of the company uh, to to test different um, innovations out, working concepts, and um, and if it, if your project wins, it gets added to the company roadmap, and you know just all kinds of stuff like that. I I just think. Um, all the all the perks are great and and all that, but I I just think the you know some of these unique um, opportunities to build skills and um, take on new challenges like that's I think what's really going to pe- keep people there in the long term. Yeah, yeah. Is, is this a fun project to work on for for both of you, or is this is this something that you're just like, oh god, I got to do this again? <laughs> or like, does it does it energize you as as the as the producers of this content? Because, again, I'm not the type of, pro- like, if I looked at this and I had to do this, again, well, okay, this is making me sound either arrogant or not. I'd be like, oh, we have to, you know, I, I'm going to just leave myself out of this. Do you <laughs> no, look forward? Now you have to finish your thought. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm not a big guy. I, I don't like a lot of data stats, number crunching, that kind of things. I, I, I prefer the anecdotes, I think, more than Well, the, I'm with you. Yeah. So, so what what do you get out of the project from from the writing perspective, Beth, and then from the editing perspective, Val? What like what do you get energized after this project is done and go, wow, there's a lot of great companies out there, or do you feel like it's just another project? <laughs> from my perspective, I don't have to deal with the number crunching yeah. and all of that data part that you and I are in the same. Uh, vein on. Uh, so from my perspective, it gives me a chance to talk to to really interesting, you know, IT leaders who are doing really cool things and are really proud of, of, of not only what they're doing in their organization, but they're proud of the people that work for them. And so you really get to hear enthusiasm. I find with this one, um, versus some of the other projects or some of the other stories I report, you don't get a, you get more sort of anecdotal in the trenches people oriented kind of discussion versus sometimes you know if you're in interviewing um a cio or an it leader about a particular project you tend to sometimes get a little business school speak and yeah that, you know yeah. The, the, this project really you know people like to talk about like we were in a meeting and then we had this innovation event and da, da, da. you get real personal stories and so for me that's mostly gratifying i love that yeah yeah val what about you uh, well, happily, I don't have to do the num- number crunching. Oh, that's I mean, true. We have, a, <laughs> we have a, a research firm who does that, you know, so, um, and, and we have a wonderful project manager who, um, who really takes charge of the whole project. So, so again, I'm kind of, you know, I'm just sort of involved at the end of the project and I get to read best great prose and, and hear all these anecdotes and things like that. So for me, it's, it's, um, you know, it really is, it, it's, it's a joyful project to work on. Yeah. Because, yeah. Um, you know, you're just, you're just finding out all this 
wonderful stuff that companies are doing. Okay. So, dur- cool. dur- during the judging process, do you have discussions with other editors and you have like uh, a roundtable discussion or is it separated and you just put numbers in on, on your favorites and then it gets tabulated? Because I've been on judging uh, things for other pro- like product and uh, like product awards. And, and sometimes there would be a, a, a jury discussion almost of, of what, you know, who the winner should be kind of a thing or, and I know you guys don't have winners and losers. You just have a list, but um, was there, was there that type of a discussion? No, it was all individual. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Like each, each judge giving their own opinion. Right. Right. Um, do you check uh, Glassdoor and in, in, in reviews like that where people can say maybe not so nice things about companies <laughs> <laughs> that might, that you know, might disqualify this, them from the list? This yeah? is its own project. Okay. Is, All right. Yeah. yeah. See, that, there you go. So, so why not do the project that says worst places to work at IT? <laughs> that might get some more views, Val. I'm just, you know, some IDs here. All right. All right. I think I, I think I've put you on the spot too much. So um, any, anyway, I, I think you would recommend to, to viewers and readers if they were looking for a new job to at least review this um, this project just to get a baseline of, of potential places to work. Right. If, if you know if they were looking for a job. And also to see what's a baseline for some of the, you know, opportunities, perks, benefits, learning initiatives that you might want to you know, inquire about if you're if you're interviewing with a company that you could be potentially interested in. Right. And and for even people that aren't that might not be looking, I think this is a great resource too. like if, if you're not looking for a job like, I, you know, I'm, I'm very happy being the host of Tech Talk and or the ID or today in tech. And uh, I, I, I'm going to go and go, you know what? I think we should have a massage therapist on staff. <laughs> Uh, I would love to have, you know, you know, uh, a meditation room and things like that. I, uh, what I want to know is like, do they look at who actually goes into the meditation room or books an appointment with the massage therapist on hours? And then like, <laughs> oh, there's a demerit because you're actually taking advantage of it. You never know. <laughs> well, it'd be like, yes, you can use the meditation room for 30 minutes, but then you have to leave 30 minutes later. Exactly. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, that that would be a that's for the other the other uh, article that's that we're going to worst gonna, places. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, OK. Uh, again, uh, it's a really cool project. And, and again, thanks for taking the time to talk with us about this today. Um, so I, I would assume that we're going to be doing this uh, for 30, the 31st year next year. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Beth Stackpole and, and Valerie Potter, thank you so much for being on the show today. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks for having us. That's all the time we have for today's show. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to our channel, uh, add any comments you have below about what makes a great company, uh, and uh, join us every week for new episodes of Today in Tech. I'm Keith Shaw. Thanks for watching.